We're at the Duluth Coffee Company uh, getting some perspective on making it. Eric, did you have a moment where you knew the Duluth Coffee Company would make it? There was a point in time, like uh, a couple years in, you know, where I, I could tell you know, the place was so packed and full that I could tell that like we had like a new responsibility to, to stay in business because we were like becoming an institution that, that it wasn't just uh, Eric's Coffee Shop, it was Duluth Coffee Company and it was representative of everyone that was working there and everything that we were creating every day. I roasted with Eric for probably a, a year or so. I was roasting hundreds of batches, uh, maybe thousands over the course of a couple of months, you know. So get a feel for it and how it moves and heats and yeah, I kind of fell in love. Kind of when I saw that, like, the company moved beyond me, I knew that we had made it and had a responsibility to each other and to our customers to, to stay in business. There was no option to fail after that. You were a roaster, you were a coffee drinker. Where did this start for you? I tell people, like, Duluth Coffee Company has always, like, been in my heart since as long as I can remember. My brother and I went to coffee shops at an early age and I always loved it. I got an espresso machine when I was in high school and was that weird kid making espresso before he went to, you know, class. And um, I started working in a coffee shop in high school and then in college I started to mess around with a roasting coffee and a popcorn popper in my dorm room and I studied English for some odd reason. Probably most likely because I liked reading books in coffee shops and I was always meant to just do coffee and do it on my own. So take me through doing it on your own and then opening a storefront. That's a big commitment. Yeah, it, it is. Like, it started small. Um, I got my first real small commercial loan. I put a lien against anything that I owned, put a, a commercial roaster in my garage slash shed and started selling coffee out of the back of an old pickup truck I had at uh, the farmer's market and, and people started to find out about me and I quit my regular job in uh, April of 2012 and uh, I've just never looked back. It's been uh, the greatest time of my life. We call that making it. <laughs> yeah. The leap anyway. Exactly, I guess, yeah. Duluth coffee has to start with beans, right? How do you know you have good beans? Knowing that you have good beans is, is about like uh, knowing like the story of each bean and for us just knowing like uh, where it came from and which hands have touched it before it's arrived to us. So for us it just starts by um, working through our importer and working all the way back uh, on every single coffee and year after year as you like taste coffees, they build a history in you. So you begin to learn farms and you begin to learn regions and, and every year when, when crops arise out of different countries like Kenya or Costa Rica, we already kind of know where to go to and then we're just continually fine-tuning what we're looking for from specific countries. How do you decide which batch you're gonna buy? We're able to, to see the quality of a, a green coffee. Green coffee is like the seed of a coffee cherry and so we're able to get information from exporters and importers about the quality of the green bean and then after we receive that green bean um, we roast it to to what we feel is going to be like the ideal taste for that coffee and then adjust it from there and we adjust it based on how it tastes and so uh, we go through a ritual called cupping and cupping is essentially just mixing water and coffee grounds and just trying to get an impression of the coffee without any influence of any brewing method. And so we take a small dish like this, we grind up a small amount of coffee, we smell the dry aromas, then we'll pour like water on it. We'll let it steep, then we'll smell the wet aromas 
and then we'll just take spoons and just slurp the coffee, swish it around in our mouth, chew on it, take in the impression of it, and then decide if this is what we're looking for in that coffee or what qualities or attributes that we can taste that we want to bring out more. How long did it take to educate and develop that palate to, to say, this is, this is the flavor I'm looking for? It's, I'm still working on it. It's something that we, we practice ritually uh, as often as we can. Uh, it took a long time to become discerning because in coffee it's, it takes a lot of humility to just say like, uh, I don't always know what this tastes like and just allow yourself to keep practicing and pressing into it and finally like building an understanding of, of your own taste buds and being able to connect your tongue with your mind and then like vocalize that. Sounds like a lot of work. It is, it's a lot of fun. <laughs>so tell me about the footprint of Duluth Coffee today. What all are you doing? When we opened, we opened in October of 2012 and it was just the coffee shop. But when we opened that coffee shop, we were a roastery first, a wholesale roasting company. That's what we wanted to be. The coffee shop was like auxiliary. And over the last five years, it's become like a community hub. It's become, you know, more of a coffee shop than a roastery. And over the past year, we've been going through an expansion. We took over this shop two doors down on the corner. We took over the whole upstairs. And we've tried to remember and redefine ourselves as a roasting company first that operates a fantastic coffee shop. And so this place here, 101, is uh, our future roastery, or what we call the Roasteria. And in this place, we're going to put a large coffee roaster, 70 kilo coffee roaster, which is much larger than what we have now. And this is where we're going to do most of our production roasting and also kind of showcase that we are a roasting company and a wholesaler. And so in this space, we've added uh, a retail component, which is this uh, bar, because uh, we believe that coffee is, is crafted and has a lot of synergy with other beverages that are crafted. And so we want to showcase wines and beers and spirits that are crafted by other local purveyors that we respect and look up to. And we also want to, in this space, we want to cultivate conversations about coffee and the perception of taste. It, there, there's a, an atmosphere, a feeling when you come in that there is a community of people that's built up around your business. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, our coffee shop feels like cheers some mornings where all the regulars are there and everybody knows each other's names. and. It's just, uh, it's such a, it's a place that's, that's beyond even all of us that work here. Like, it's owned by the community at this point. And it's, I, I love it because on weekends like Grandma's Marathon, um, it's still happening. All the regulars are in there and it's loud and excited. And people from out of town come in and they just watch it like a show going on of all the interactions between employees and customers. and. Uh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's an extremely fun place, an energetic space, and a place with just a lot of energy every single day. Yeah. Well, congratulations for Thank making you. this step. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs>